perhaps in the history of show business, perhaps there has been no one female who meant so much, who has done more. Joe Lorenko. The late Marilyn Monroe. Biff, what do you get when you cross a banana with geometry? What? A slippery slope. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. Uh, hey, hey, Biff, uh, I just read this uh, great book on mazes. Oh, really? I really got lost in it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, but I love it. Hello, everybody. This is Jacques. What's this is Biff. <laughs> when did he become German? <laughs> you know, not the Axis powers. Voices all bleed together. And I swear if you do an Italian accent next. <laughs> Mamma mia. It's a Joe. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's Joe. Uh, Joe and I just had the most delightful, uh, conversation with, uh, next week's sideshow guest, um, uh, Dahlia Black, uh, comedian I met in LA. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely funny. You, you, you got any immediate takeaways or plugs for next week, Joe? I don't think that's her real name. <laughs> I have some concerns about her name. <laughs> Um, no, but it was, we, we just talked to her, you know, really funny. Um, and, uh, you know what I did, I do, we like last week we had, uh, Lauren Caputo on who I also did a show with out in LA and she was incredibly funny. We've had a lot of great comics on and, um, I'm happy to listen to funny people talk about them being funny versus you listening to me talk about how I think I'm funny. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we got to mix things up around here, you know, just for the sake of sanity. So um, talking about guests, uh, Biff is working with a couple dear, dear friends of ours, friends for like 25 years who are incredible people trying to line up some guests. Uh, there's a couple other people that we're hoping to have on as guests, um, but it just recently, and by recently, I mean a couple days ago, has come to uh, my attention that uh, a really, really, really close friend of my boss's wife, uh, what day is this? So this is Monday on Friday. No, it's not really Monday. Come on. Nobody listens on Monday. It could be Wednesday when they're listening. We're recording this on a Friday, August 25th, 2023. 
at 7 39 p.m eastern time about about 7 30 doing the math about 16 hours ago this absolutely amazing person jasmine uh mogbelly i hope i'm saying it right mogbelly or mobily no is no it, so it's mogbelly mogbelly okay. um uh, uh is a dear friend of my wife's boss just got on a rocket ship to go to the stars or the international space station for the next six months um and i fell down the rabbit hole of 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 reading this woman's absolutely incredible bio Uh, the first thing in her bio is mommy and the second thing in her bio is marine attack helicopter pilot (laughs) You know, and she went to MIT with my wife's boss, who is somebody else who claims they will come on the podcast soon, who's one of the smartest people I've ever got to talk with and is just an absolute delight. And what's amazing about this woman who's going into space or gone into space, she's up at the space station now. You know, the the tough part of this is having to leave behind her two and a half year old twins. Um, my, my my wife's boss, you know, and and this woman, within a month, I think their babies were born, you know, and she and this astronaut had to be in quarantine for the last month. So when she gets back, you know, she's going to have been gone, you know, what what is what is what is Six seven months. months of three year old, you know, that's a twenty three percent of their lives. Mm-hmm. Um, but but it's an incredible story, and, and it's funny because you know she is um an Iranian immigrant. And as soon as I read her bio, I sent her stuff to our friend Ronick, who's also an Iranian uh, immigrant, who's just the most amazing person. I'm like, oh, great. Another Iranian woman coming over, taking my job. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know she bombed on stages in Worcester. Well, that's that's what I was reduced to. Now that I, I'm not, you know, piloting a rocket to the space station. Every question wrong, but the date of birth. <laughs> um, so we do. We're, we're you know we're going to continue having like you know comedy pals of mine and you know comedy people. I hope become pals with mine and yours, Joe. And at the same time. You know, we're just really it's it's just really cool that we do have some friends who are out there doing some amazing things. So I'm super stoked to maybe maybe in eight months, you know, maybe maybe give her a day or two to get acclimated before I'm like, hey, can don't you? they have Zoom on the International Space Station? <laughs> What's their excuse? I mean, um, so a couple uh, I don't know the right way to say this. I'm just going to put it out there. Um, it might be the worst moment of my 13 year old son entire life to date. And he had a bad moment. He didn't have a bad moment. A moment happened since our last podcast that has shaken my 13 year olds belief system to the core and might haunt him forevermore. He is desperately waiting for his uh, Spider-Man web slinger type gadget that his mom ordered it looks really cool it does all these things it like shoots a magnet anyways we're in the driveway because he is frantically checking the delivery schedule and it says like in truck on route we're standing in the driveway and the post you know the uh, the mail truck doesn't pull up to our mailbox it pulls up to the driveway and stops and it's like oh because it's a package you know so it's a special delivery and as we're walking over to the mail truck, the mail person says, you got any jokes for me? And I say, uh, he goes, aren't you the comedian who was in the newspaper a few weeks ago? <laughs> I got recognized. Wow. In front of my 13 year old who just instantly looks at me and the look of, oh, fuck. <laughs> Oh, fuck. I will never hear the end of this to the end of my, to the, to this fat fuck is doing the dirt nap. (laughs) And on your tombstone, you will have written, I was recognized for my comedy by a male person. 
I mean, you know my ego. You know my son. Can you think of a worse fate to befall him? Oh, God, yeah. I I don't know if they'll have a casket big enough to fit both you and your ego in it. <laughs> I mean, and I was, I, I for a minute, I'm like, what is he talking about? And then when he mentioned that, I'm like, oh, my God. It was like, and then we chatted for a few minutes. It was nice. And, you know, and then instantly, you know, I come in, we tell management the story, and she's laughing. I'm like, oh, no. He knows where I live. <laughs> mm. I just, I just, yeah, yeah. I will be dining out on this. Let, let me check the menu from now till forever. And this will be like. Is so, this uh, your four touchdowns in one game? <laughs> Polk High City yeah. Championship. Oh, dude. It was and like if I had come in and told anybody it had happened, you know, uh, yeah, maybe it happened. Maybe it did it, but it happened in front of him. It's so yeah. much better that it happened in front of him because, um, you know, he's younger and he will carry this scar a lot longer than his, <laughs> his mom or his brother will. Um, so, yeah, so, so, uh, that's it. I'm retiring from comedy. I, I made it, oh, you, boy. You, you know, you know, this Joe, the last podcast. So we're all good. You know, you know I, today's my birthday. <laughs> And what a fine birthday present it shall be to I learn. Your birthday Sunday. No. Oh Sunday. my gosh! It is. I'm sorry. Not today is my birthday. I just dispelled the whole breaking the fourth wall thing that I bashed earlier. Monday the 28th is my birthday. So happy birthday to me! Because oh, I just I'm a day late sending Taylor's birthday card to him the other day. I you know I remember to send the link the same link I send to everybody on their birthday. Uh, but the next day it's like I was at the store and I got, like, got the card and stuff like that. Are you I, are you gonna I, Pee Wee Herman me on my birthday? Are you gonna send me nothing but like weird gifts? Because I I do know how to use the mute function on my <laughs> texting. I know where you live. I, you oh, know, yes. <laughs> you know, well, you already I, got me a birthday present. My uh, not, friendship. Not the, <laughs> well, that, that, yeah, of course. Um, we, your favorite podcaster. Uh, no, you are, uh, when you came back from Los Angeles, uh, and last week when I visited your humble abode, um, and then we, we can get into that, uh, that last, that surprise event that happened last week. But uh, while I was there, uh, you handed me a, a, a record album that um you kind of previewed to me while you were in los angeles and it's the weird al yankovic in 3d you know the 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 album with eat it on it and it's the one weird al yankovic record that i don't own pre like 1990s so like i don't have you know i have everything from you know the uhf soundtrack earlier like everything in the 80s uh and and i and you know what um, I couldn't be happier. So thank you. No, I, I was delighted to find it. It's like when I found it in New York that day, and, and we will. We're going to do a listening thing, too. I was showing Joe some of the other albums that I got, this Red Fox Party album from, like, the early 60s, this Voices thing. But I saw that, and it's just I don't know how well it's been stored the last 30 years. So ho hopefully we will get all the entertainment we possibly can out of it. Um but you do have a big birthday weekend uh, coming up. Uh, you're, you're um, you know, you know, being uh, be, being a um, uh, a devout you. You're making the trek to Mecca, or one of your meccas, uh, uh, retro expo, and and yes, Hartford, uh, Connecticut, a retro world expo in Hartford, Connecticut. I, I don't know which annual what one this is, but we've been to let's just say a lot. Um, yeah, and it, it it will be fun. I think uh, my younger son, both my sons are coming with me, and my younger son's friend is coming with us. So I'll get to poison a young, another young mind with my l ludicrous hobby. Um, they can be bored to tears, but I think there will be wrestling that day. Um, not in the car, but actually <laughs> on stage at the venue. So it, it'll be a good time. Now, and, now uh, if you were driving down there with my boys in the car, yeah, there would be wrestling in the car as well as in the parking lot, walking into the venue and the venue. Right. Um, well, I, I, you know, maybe because I didn't teach my kids Krav Maga. Like they, <laughs> they don't know. They don't know from these things. I, 
I think that's more of a nature than nurture thing with my <laughs> kids. I think they came kicking and clawing the way out of the thing looking to drop gloves with somebody. Uh, no, that's fantastic. And the great thing about the trip that you're taking with your sons going down there, they still want to go. It's not like you're going down to Retro World Expo and you're going to like it. Right. No, Actually, it every year as we're leaving the venue, I go – you know, I think this is going to be the last one. I think we're all done. I think we've hit the zenith of looking at old, you know, 30 to 40 year old video games that are way overpriced that I could easily get, you know, either for free on the internet or you know, cheaper elsewhere. And they're like, no, no, no. I think we have a good time. You know, we get to hang out and play arcades and, you know, I don't know. And, and the, I think the wrestling when when they had like live wrestling there last yeah. year, I think they kind of put it over the top. You were I th you, you were there. It was right? it was so good. Yes. The guy wrestling with the switch. Yes, yes, he was dressed in pants, dressed in in in, in like these lycra pants that were switch controller colored, and yeah, his his uh, weapon of choice was a, a Nintendo Switch. Anyway, I don't know if we'll see him again this year, but I'll I'll report back. Are there any are there any guests like panelists that you're going to try to catch, or are you just going to to to, to mosey from, you know, uh, you know, proprietor proprietor looking at their fancy wares? I'm probably just gonna yeah I'll I'll I think I'm gonna mosey. I mean you know I've I, I've already met Pat the NES Punk you know numerous times. Um, he's not coming this year to the to the venue. There are a couple of personalities I recognize, but. You know, uh, maybe I'll sit in on one of those very dry, boring panels that only I will and 30 other people will enjoy. <laughs> and uh, will Mr. T be at the mall? <laughs> you know what? If he is, I'll go a little later. Uh, I sadly won't be joining you. I would, but busy weekend. Uh, by, by the time this podcast will drop, I might drop because uh, tomorrow morning, Saturday, it's it's one of those. I'm trying to do the math in my head. It will be I about was told a, there would be no math. It will be about six, twelve, probably sixteen or seventeen hour journey from our humble abode. It's the best kind of journey. Up to up to uh, <laughs> anyway, up to Montreal to see the New England Revolution play CF Montreal and Montreal. And that's it. We were going to do this whole weekend with my little guys because there's a Six Flags there and this, and and the oldest one can't go, and um, and so the little guy's like, "Oh, can I bring a couple of my friends?" Which normally the answer would be yes, but I can't take somebody else's kid across international borders. You know, Canada might be a lot like us, but uh, they frown upon those types of things up there. They're prudes. You know, it's, you know, I can take them to the mall in New Hampshire. Like, you know, one exit away, but that's a little different than, than Montreal. Um, so we're just – but he has his heart set. He's like, but we're still going to the game, right? I'm like, Sh sure, sure, buddy. Sure, sure. I'll drive five – like I mapped it a little while ago. With no traffic, it's five miles to the stadium because it's on the other side of Montreal. It's like – Oh, it's like, oh, map into Boston. Oh, wait, Gillette Stadium's a, another hour after Boston. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, so it's five hours each way. But we'll get there a few hours early, get something to eat. So you're leaving right after this podcast. Yeah, pretty much. No, I'm going to leave about, like, I'll probably leave about 10 in the morning, 9 in the morning. And then I got to get right back. Honestly, the game will get over at 10 o'clock at night, drive right back, get home, like, pull over, take a nap somewhere, but I get home at like six or seven, but then my boys and I have to be down at the Boston Common uh, right across the street from which she is, is. And uh, a little surprise, a little surprise get together for mom who turns 80 in a couple months. But the thought process is, Hey, before the kids are in school and all this stuff, why don't we have a little family, the seven and a half grandkids? Because our friend Ross, uh, Professor Dr. Ross Salwich, as we all know from Physics Today. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, not, not as PhD from Harvard or as 10 years at Jet Propulsion Laboratories or tenure professor of you know, uh, or guest of Carnival Personnel. Uh, okay, okay, oh, coming on Carnival Personnel with his book about the 
Paris Climate Agreement. No, his his zenith of his his being is Joe playing him on Physics Today in ninety four. Yeah, ninety four, ninety five. Yeah, I say ninety five. Not 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 ninety five on on a little comedy show. Uh, anyway, so and then I go right from there to. Other guest of the podcast, uh, Mike Controbis, is running a hosting class, and afterwards he's having a showcase, and he's bringing other because he he's a booker, and he's like, yep, he's bringing a bunch of bookers to see people who do this showcase. So Sunday could be one of those things where it's like, oh, you know, Jacques, you've been doing this for a while, and uh, you have to stop now. Nobody likes you, and you sucked in front of the few people in New England who could give you real gigs. Um, or they could say, hey, you kind of suck, but not as much as we thought. So here's a seven-minute opening set up in Brunswick, New Hampshire for 50 bucks next Tuesday <laughs> night. <laughs> you know, enjoy being upside down on the gas, you freak. So, so who knows which way it's going to go. It could, it could go one way. It could go the other. You know what my tip is, is, you know, uh, tell jokes people know. That way, <laughs> if they don't like you, at least they have something to applaud at the end. Oh, so, yeah, so lots going on. Um, school starts next week. Um, you know, both my kids were on waiting list. They both got into the same uh, school, which is really great. It's one drop off in the morning. Like, just <laughs> slow down, boot them out, keep going. They, they know to roll. They know to tuck and roll when they hit the ground. Um uh, but but it was uh it was an interesting week because we were on the waiting list uh f- for this place um it, it it's it's great it's a charter school and and we had a big decision to make it's like oh a little guy he's not in yet and they think he'll be in in the first couple of weeks so maybe we keep him home versus having him start someplace new for a week two days three days ten days um. We can't send him back to the school that he was. We could. We definitely could. But there was just too much. Eh. So we decided, yeah, we know we can't go back there. We talked to the you know, superintendent directly, and he let me know, look, we've made changes. I fired that guy because he was horrible to your kid. And it's like, what? And it's like, yeah. So that 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 was good. I mean, it doesn't help our situation, but maybe you know, at least that guy won't be around to be horrible to other kids. <laughs> You know, going forward, but uh, but yeah, so it's, so that's a big week next week, and you still got one more year of uh, you know, getting a kid up and out the door in the morning. Yep, for, for yep. school. Right. Yep. It's one more year of um, you know, servitude. No, and then <laughs> uh, you know, hopefully that this final year of education will lead to four more years of education. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how things shake out. But. Do you want to uh, backtrack a little bit and talk about what we did last Friday evening? I or, would. Nah. Yeah, no, we did. Go ahead. What, what did we do last Friday evening, Joe? Tell tell the good people. Well, tell the good person. First, I, 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 I will uh, start off with the lead story. I had to put a quart of oil in my car because the oil light came on as I was pulling up to the driveway of your home. So I did that. And then um, from there, you know, we had um, a nice little sit down. We put on the Plex. You know, started watching in whatever random TV show was on my Plex. Of course, Perfect Strangers popped up, and uh, you're checking your email. Which, by the way, let's 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 not blow by the Perfect Stranger episode. How great was that episode? You know, it, it was it was a it was a six or seven. I don't know. Yeah. It was okay. It was the one where uh, Balky gets a, 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 a parrot or some sort of a bird that talks and two weeks later he you know he trains it and um trains it to talk he accidentally uh larry accidentally leaves the window open the bird flies out uh it's you know the dead of winter but balky insists on waiting by the open window for the bird to return and comedy ensues i don't want to spoil it for anybody but let me just say laughter was had by many (laughs) Uh, but anyways, we're watching that, and then all of a sudden, you get a, a notice on your, I guess it's called a smartphone. Yeah, yep, yep. And uh, it, apparently, you were 90 minutes away from doing something <laughs> online that I can, you were just yeah. reminded of at that moment. And what was that thing? Yeah, I got a Zoom link. There's a comedy organization called KO Comedy out of San Francisco, and 
I guess weeks earlier, I got booked to do a Zoom show with, you know, but most of the comics, I think, were in Los Angeles. But there was a couple. There was another one outside of Boston. I think there were six comics altogether. But, yeah, a real bona fide Zoom comedy show that people really log into. And it's a thing and it's a regular thing. And I guess they've been doing it since the pandemic. Uh, it's funny because I think, again, former guest on the show, uh, uh, Lloyd uh, uh, Lloyd Legacy Sharp gave me the heads up on them, and I'm like, "Hey, I'd like to do this too," you know. And they're like, "Great, how about this date?" <laughs> Completely forgot it, absolutely. So I, I dragged Joe over to do our normal. Hey, let's have a nice little dinner. Let's stuff food in our face to guarantee we're dead by sixty, and let's watch, you know, all this great gold from the seventies and eighties on his plex, and then. Uh, so I have to come downstairs. I prep for the show, prep for the show by literally looking at the cards on the table and throwing a set together. But, but Joe was a real star of the show. Oh, uh, well, right. Yes. I remember because we had to make way for me to like, you know, sit down and watch him do stand up on the internet. And in order to do so, I had to move his drum set out of, out of the way. And as I'm moving the drum kit, I'm like, oh man. This would be a great opportunity for me to actually sit in and, and do a drum fill for you every time or a rim shot every time you do a joke. And, I, and he goes, oh, yes, you have to. <laughs> you can't not do it now. And so, yeah, I sat by, you know, we didn't mic it. I think it was easily picked up by the, uh, the regular mic that you were using. And, um, you know, I, I, I got in a couple of rim shots. So I, you know, I was nervous. I have to admit, I was nervous. <laughs> I'd never uh, drummed in public before, but um, I think I, I think I did okay, and I think you did okay too. You know, I heard laughter after your intended jokes. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I, I did. I felt bad. It's like Joe drives an hour. We don't get to hang out much, and it gets monopolized. Yeah, that was a two-hour window. That was a yeah. two-hour between the start of it and then the Zoom people are like, okay, there's a Zoom after party. Click. <laughs> Like, like yeah. I, I, you know, I might have like state logged on, but I'm like, no, I'm not making jokes it through this. So, it, yeah, it's it, and it is. I've I've actually got booked for things recently, and there's a big podcast, like a a a, a vlog cast, you know, out of Lowell with some people in the hip hop community. I got booked as a guest like uh, like two months ago. I thought it was on a Thursday and it was on a Wednesday and I showed up at the studio with my oldest kid on Thursday. And I'm like, Hey, why is this locked? No. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh my God. And I did. I apologized. What's I the matter with you? This. Dude, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm old and I, I'm suffering. You have from a CRS. phone. You set reminders to take I a do. shit. And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I I did. So so when that KO comedy thing came through, it was like, okay, here's the link. See everybody in that. I'm like, oh my god, Joe, I'm so sorry. But it it was okay, you know. I mean, the, the, the only way I could get Joe to come see me to comedy is to sandbag him into into coming over. But yeah, no, well it, played, <laughs> well played. And now, hey Rocky, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat again. Nothing up my sleeve. Crystal! Ah! Wrong hat! I take a seven and a half! Now here's something we hope you'll really like! You know what? Let's move on to TV. Okay. What are you watching this week? If it was 1977. That's the year I was born. Which, by the way, is relevant somehow this week because my birthday was this week. Ha ha! Yay! No, I'm a, I'm a year older. <laughs> I'm happy! You look amazing for 60. Uh -huh. You look amazing i'm really 75 <laughs> that's how old i feel um yeah let's talk about 70s tv what do you want to talk about 1977 what what what, what, what tickles your fancy most growing up so when i'm a lad running home from seeing star wars the 20th time that summer the biggest talk night about white privilege <laughs> the big <laughs> the biggest night in television was always Thursday night. It was, I mean, when I, I don't watch any TV now, but when is Thursday night still a big night for TV? Yeah. Yeah, it's must see TV. It's Shonda Land, you know, that kind of like Grey's Anatomy, right. how to get away with murder. Yeah. TGIT, they call it, or they used to call it. Maybe they still do. But in 1977, I remember the prime time. And that's the other thing. This is pre Fox, this is three networks. 
everything that made the airways was pure gold that has stood the test of time. And it's been a while since we've done a self-indulgent theater. <laughs> and I have asked the birthday boy if he could delight me, and I'm quite sure you, dear listener, by reading the primetime lineup for 1977 as the voice of 1977, Casey Casey. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I could try that. Um, so, what do you want me to do? You want me to, you want me to read the lineup as Casey Kasem? Uh, but, but, but you know, but put your little spin on it. You know, like yeah, you're doing a promo for the entire lineup. Yeah, I'm looking all at... networks, all three of them. <laughs> The three, the big three networks. The big three. Not including PBS. The, the, the Thursday night. Just yes. just the Thursday night for the big three uh-huh. for the year 1977. Reading uh, as Casey Kasem. All right. So just imagine. T- I'm taking you back to 1977. Here, let's give this a try. It's Casey Kasem here with the 1977 NBC fall lineup. This Thursday on NBC, it's Punch, it's the other guy. <laughs> They're California Highway Patrolmen, otherwise known as Chips. Followed at 9 Eastern, 8 Central, 7 Mountain, 9 Pacific, because they don't go that far back. It's Man from Atlantis. That's not Jason Momoa. (laughs) Then at 10, Rossetti and Ryan. I think that's some sort of a pasta combination. I'm not sure. You know, if you're going to lead into the 10 o'clock lineup with these fucking weird titles, I, I, you know, maybe give me a heads up. Is this a drama? Is this a comedy? I'm coming out of a the man from Atlantis going into a fucking Russell and Ryan at what? At 10? Is Don on the phone? That's on NBC. You want me to do ABC? Yeah. Uh, you don't have to do Fox. Uh, in case you could. Coming up at 9 p.m. on ABC, it's Welcome Back, Cotter. Back for their seventh season. <laughs> no, they only had four seasons. Isn't that right? Yeah, you got your John Travolta's and your, your Gabe Kaplan's. And um, that's all I know. Oh, then Horshack. You got that nerd Horshack. Followed by your black show, What's Happening? <laughs> there you go. There's one for you. What, you're not happy with just one show? Now, later in the year, instead of watching what's happening at 8.30 on Thursday night, you're watching Fish. You know, Abe Vigoda, soon to be dead Abe Vigoda, I'm sure. He's got to go sometime, right? I mean, he didn't look too healthy in The Godfather, I'll tell you that. Followed at 9 p.m. by Barney Miller, the same writers who went on to write Night Court, by the way. I'll have you know. Well, how would I know that? It's 1977. 9.30, Carter Country. What the fuck is Carter Country? Is Dawn on the phone? <laughs> and then at 10 o'clock, it's the Red Fox Comedy Hour. Can a man relax? <laughs> if you want lighter fare in the winter, you're watching Beretta. Nothing possibly bad can happen from that. And that's your ABC Thursday night lineup. And now the last one. Now oh, the- CBS? Yeah. All right. Was CBS just holding on? Or did they have CBS any- was, they were rocking. I think oh. NBC was the shitty one. At 8 p.m., it's that lovely Christian family we love to say goodnight to, the Waltons. Followed by, at 9 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Mountain, <laughs> Hawaii Five O, And then, 10 o'clock, Barnaby Jones, starring, was it Buddy, what, 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 what's that guy's name? Buddy Epson, <laughs> right? Buddy Epson? Was it Buddy Epson? Is Siri on the phone? <laughs> wasn't it Buddy Epson? It wasn't Buddy Hackett, I'll tell you that. Should have been. Who the fuck cares? I'm coming out of a fucking Hawaii Five O dedication. We got a nice uplifting show about Hawaii cops. Book them, Dano. And that's your CBS lineup on Thursday night. I'm Casey Kasem. Keep your feet on the ground. Keep reaching for the stars. And keep trying to reach Don. I want to know if those photos of mine are ready. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. So where are you right now? You're not over here this week. You know, management is out of town again. Another Duran Duran concert, and um, and I'm like, hey, Joe, come over. It's like, oh, I got this. This all, all of a sudden, you're interested in your kid's life now. Like, no, not really. 
no, <laughs> it's more of an obligation than anything else. Well, I mean, like, I, you know, if I, if I, hey, if I was more proactive as a parent and taught him how to drive, he would have driven himself to his SATs. But unfortunately, I have to drive him, you know, that hour long or 30, 45 minute drive uh, to take SATs, which, by the way, don't mean shit. All right. You know, hey, more and more places are doing away with them. Yeah, well, at no, least but, they're expensive, right? What, how much is this? Oh, I don't cost? even know. No, I don't even. Who knows? And it's coming out of his college fund. I don't know. Really <laughs> no, I, I, I honestly, I, it, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I did because I, I didn't do the signing up. Uh, the better half, the 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 responsible half did. Um, but you know, he he did the study exam and you know did pretty well on them. So I'm thinking that you know, um, if the time. You know, different because he had, you know, the, it starts at like 8 a.m., you know, so his pre, he took his practice test around, you know, 11, 11, 12, you know, the gears are a little gre- no, more greased it, up it, at that hour. You, you know, there's a, it's crazy how early kids start school, like in Lowell, because there's only so many buses and there's it's a real city. And so the high school kids are getting on the bus at 645 and starting. And because you need those buses to then backtrack and get the junior high kids and, you know, it works backwards. And there's all these studies. It's like your brain doesn't work at 645 a.m. No, you know, you know, it, and, and that's what have you ever had surgery, Joe? Yeah. Couple okay. Times. What time? What time was your surgery scheduled for? Because usually oh, like, it's like, I think in the evening. Oh, yours was in the evening. Most of the time, like I've had the few times I've had surgeries, it's like, yep, yeah, you're walking in at like five thirty. You're going into pre-op at six, or you know, it's like you're pre-op at five. Like honestly, when I just had the colonoscopy a couple months ago, it's like. You know, I'm not awake at this time in the morning to usually poop on my own, and now we're doing a colia. It's like, how are the doctors just awake at this time? You know, it it is. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's a mystery. Yeah, yeah, I got the I got the lazy doctor. I think I had like a, you know, uh, I had the. Well, no, I can't say that. I, I had an appendectomy when I was, you know, way way back. Um, but yeah, it was an evening thing. I think. I don't remember. See, I get the doctor who's trying to get the surgeries done before he goes golfing. You got the guy <laughs> who's rolling in after he's gone golfing. Yeah, I uh, thought it smelled like peat moss when he <laughs> walked in. But. So I do. I, I, you know, I hope your little guy does does great. Thank um, you. you know, very, very, you know, that's a that, that's a that's a big thing. That's like, I, you know, does he feel like the pressure? Like, I don't know. He's no, he's not like a super anxious kid. Um, I think he's confident enough in his, based on his pre-test to say, yeah, I can, I can swing this and, you know, um, yeah, I think he'll do well. Um, now, as far as, you know, raising the money to go to college, that's a different story, but you know, we're hoping that he'll, I'm thinking anything less than a 1600 on this FAT, <laughs> he's not coming back because we need that scholarship. Well, I mean, I mean uh, the lacrosse scholarships coming in. Uh, um, the the crossword scholarship. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Is, is there is, is well, there is there this? an Inten- is there a Nintendo Switch scholarship? <laughs> yes, dude. E e they they have e gaming scholarships and teams now, like collegiate level scholarships. They actually do. Like what we've been joking about the last thirty years is a thing now. There are scholarships for e athletes. Yeah. Which, come on, the word athlete. Next, I mean golfers. Barely, barely qualified. I mean, at least I was called a math lead in a way, you know. <laughs> I, I would never have stolen valor and call myself a math <laughs> athlete. So no, that 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 will be great. No, I, I'm I'm at least three years away from my kids taking those tests. Now I was trying to think. It, it wasn't lacrosse. What were crewing? What you know that that scandal where they were getting the students oh, to yes. the side door and they were like photoshopping pictures of them playing like you know different. And I can't remember what sport it was. Like I don't think it was. Lacrosse. No, it was. I think it was. Uh, yeah, it was. It was the rowing. Yeah, rowing. Um. So, you know, Biff isn't here. So Biff be an interesting one to talk about this. So we'll just blow by it real quick. What are you talking about? I am here. <laughs> this is Biff. Hello. <laughs> what were you oh, saying? Oh, hey. Uh, hey, before we go on, yeah, uh, I posted it last week. For the first time since Biff's become a co-host, the three of us went out last week. How great was that? Yeah. How much fun was that? Fantastic. Oh, my goodness. I still have, look, uh, 
I can I can jingle for them for you right now. Oh! I still have the tokens from the barcade that we visited, literally a block from my office. Uh, so that, yeah, it, what a what a delight! What a delight! Biff was and your and your management was joined us as well. Uh, everybody was just great. The uh, the food was good. The uh, the scene was nice. You know, it was. Well, like, when's the last time? This is a legit question. I'm not. I'm not trying to be funny. When's the last time you closed a bar down? Ah, uh, gee, gosh, uh, it had to have been ten years ago, maybe. I don't know. Did we? Did we not get chased out of this bar? Yeah. Well, it's easy to close a bar that closes at eleven o'clock. Yeah, but you know what? What? Why? 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 <laughs> why do you have to find the cloud inside the silver lining? <laughs> you, know? you know. Which is, by the way, very smart. I mean, this is near the MIT campus, by the way, so. A lot of brainy people. They know what they're doing. They know their limitations. It's five to eleven. No nonsense. Get the hell out of here. You've played enough Pac-Man. You don't need to finish the entire Simpsons arcade game. Yes, we did. Because you have the quarters to prove. I mean, could could we have completed that game with the oh, yeah. Of quarters you have? Like, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we we were like level six, something like that. We, yeah, we were up there, dude. That was. I mean, but to have Biff, you know, there in management, there it was so much fun. The food was the the veggie burger I got was really good. I bet it would have tasted better with a knife and fork. Oh man, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that that is. <laughs> if there's a downside, it's like yeah, yeah. Here you go, <laughs> Yeah, bring your own silverware. Um, and what was the name of the place? Uh, Ryan's Barcade. Barcade, yeah. yeah. But it was wasn't. Ryan? No, no, it wasn't. Roxy's. 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 And, and Biff found it. Like, Biff was like, hey, you know, why don't we? Because we, we're like, hey, because he was in town for work. It's like, yeah, I can do it on this day. And, and by the way, I'm doxing myself now. It's like a block from my work. This is the name of the arcade. You know, come find and murder me. Yeah, but they don't know a corner. <laughs> That's <laughs> oh. true. <laughs> Hi, oh. You usually dress different too. When you're That's at, right. When you're at work. Usually I'm, yeah, usually I'm Roxy. Yeah. So. <laughs> But it uh, it was it was it was the first time the three of us have gotten together since you know Biff's come on as a co-host and it was absolutely delightful. I cannot believe I almost forgot that, but yeah, that that was a serious serious fun night. And when the guy comes over and it's like, we unplugged the machines at eleven, and you and I like there's still like five or six quarters left on the screen, like calling next game, although we're the only ones still <laughs> in the in the place. Um, no, but it was great. But the other thing I was going to say I wish Biff was on the show for is how – have you followed at all the blindsight Michael Orr story? Yeah, and uh, enough. Yeah, it's it, – you know, I, I don't know like the entire depth of it, but basically the gist is that the person who the movie The Blindside was based on, he came out recently to say that he didn't make any money from that movie – and that he never gave permission for his likeness to be used in that movie. And he was also claiming that his parents didn't adopt him, but he was duped into a conservatorship, which I think he, but then it came out later that he knew that it was a conservatorship. So I don't know who to believe. By the way, Britney Spears is reconciling with her dad. Speaking of conservatorships, nobody knows how to live anymore. No. Everybody needs help with parents and ah, Christ. So, this is so this is 14th hand knowledge at the best but this i never saw the movie management saw it like three times in the theater was dying for me to go see it she does not like sports love sports movies love sports movies love sports documentaries i'm done with sports you know except for driving my son <laughs> to another country to see a you know, the equivalent of double a triple maybe <laughs> double a double a you know the MLS, the, the Lowell Spinners of football. If 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 the if the if the if the New England Revolution that's AAA. was in no no like Lowell Spinners were single A. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it's now the Worcester Red Sox are AAA. Right. But the uh, I'm trying to think where an MLS team without Messi would fall. You know, pre Messi, before two months ago, you take the best MLS team. They're not in the Prem. They're not in the Champions. They're like maybe series. They may be. They're maybe the equivalent of double A European football. You know what I mean? Uh, but either way, yeah. But I, I still I'll, I like old sports, so I'll watch an old documentary. You know. But anyways, management always wanted me to watch The Blind Side because, again, 
we have friends in sports, like who work at the highest level at sports. We have, you know, Dr. Salowich comes up on the podcast again, you know, season ticket holder with the Ravens, but also, you know, one of his best friends growing up, works in the NFL, consults with teams. And from day one, there was rumblings that Michael Orr was not happy about that movie, like as a rookie. And and some of it was like, dude, it's tough enough to be a rookie in the NFL without people mocking you that there's a movie out about you being poor and, you know, and it's like. And, and intellectually disabled or something. Right? Well, well the, the, I don't even, uh, am I thinking of something else? No, no. I mean, that's so that, that's the whole if you ever hear Michael Orr speak. Dude, he he doesn't talk like the guy, the character from the Green Mile. I'm trying to think right. of that character's or, name. Or radio. Remember that movie with right. Cuba Gooden Jr. Nope. He 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 he. You know, it, 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 it's like you know, it's like listening to Denzel Washington speak or something like that. You know, I mean, he he's a very well spoken, intellectual guy who in that movie, you know, basically. A character out of Andis, uh, Amos and Otis. Well, I'm trying to think the real Amos race. And Andy? Amos and Andy. Like, like you know, and I'm not even going to do the affectation because that, that would be horrible. No, no. <laughs> there, there I was, was hoping I was leading you down that way. I like, know. There was, there was a time I would have taken the cheese on that. It's like, oh, it's okay. It's completely okay. Why? You're not going to audition for Saturday Night Live anytime <laughs> soon. Let's go. But, uh. But yeah, so I mean, it's just a sad thing. But I remember when the first when the movie first came out, and I was just you know you couldn't help but see trailers and highlights, and it literally seemed like those people were boosters for whatever college team he went to play for. And if you know anything about college football, you take everything you know about crazy Patriot fans or Celtics fans during their heyday. And that pales in comparison to what, you know, you yeah, know they're like mega piece. Yes, thank you. And so it really, uh, from day one, it struck me as like, yeah, they see this diamond in a rough, like, oh, if he gets a good education and gets a chance and blah, 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 he's going to be on, you know, the fast track to be a lawyer or have like, no, he's going to be able to be good for our college football team for four years and then we're going to forget about him. But he goes on to play pro and... It's just a horrible story. But the thing is, I've been hearing, yep, this is all going to come to a head at one point. It just took longer for, I guess, for whatever, it, you know, is happening to come out. But I think the worst part is, from an outsider looking in, is like, yeah, that movie did. It made him seem like, you know, he was completely like, you know, I, I gosh, I wish I could remember Michael like Duncan's Forrest character. Like Gump or, yeah. 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 Just, just, just a simpleton and just, uh, but, uh. But yeah, no, that's 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 you know, I guess that's the only big news. Can you think of any other big news since the last time we've talked? Or did we cover it all? We're about uh, ready to wrap this one up. I I, I think um, I don't think there's anything le else left to say. So um, thank you, Biff, for coming on the podcast. And uh, no, so just before we go, we won't talk about anything except is the mugshot going to be over the next hundred years, the most seen photograph of any U.S. president. We'll be forgetting about it in a year. Because it's like, going to oh, be Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember that. That was, that was three indictments ago. <laughs> no, no, but that that's the first mugshot of a U.S. president. Like, if there's more mugshots, if, if he Actually, is... no. There are, are there, there are... Did you see all the mugshots of Barack Obama? <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. There are, like, pictures of him holding mugs. Like, did you see a... <laughs> See, I'm, what like, he's, what he's no, there, was, I'm stealing he's a con there was a, a, a comedian on Twitter who said uh, these are you know nobody talks about the mug shots of Barack Obama and it's like him with you know uh, him with his wife Michelle like sharing a you know a mug of root beer or something or him having a beer with one of his constituents or something like that oh that's I just hope he wasn't wearing a tan suit because I think we all agree that's that's what I everything think you're hung up on the tan suit like you'll just let it go uh, no, no, because they couldn't like literally the tan suit got more coverage than these four indictments of the 92 federal charges. But because you know, somebody pointed out the interesting thing as our society moves away from physical currency, you know, because we all have pictures of dead presidents in our pocket. But as as physical money becomes less and less, that will probably be the most seen photo of, of a U.S. president over the next hundred years. Anyways. Well, maybe. Uh, and by the, uh, uh, one more thing. Yeah. 
six three two fifteen. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, uh, I, I, I refer you to the tweet of one Stormy Daniels in response to such a claim, and you will be pleasantly surprised. You know, our, our friend Dante the Comic posted like he's he's like, I'm 5'10", I'm in decent shape, and I'm 2'10". You know what I mean? Right. And it's like, yeah. Rex Chapman on Twitter posted a picture of him. He's like, I'm 6'5", 215. Right? And, you know, he looks like a, 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 like just a lean, you know. Like he could still play some serious. No, it's, like, it's, it's him playing basketball. Like, oh, yeah, right, it's, right, like, yeah. it's like him at the foul line. Um, but anyway, yeah. He, so, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm sure it'll go. He's already fundraising off of it. So oh, but, but, um, now, should we continue to talk about it? Or has any other outlets mentioned this? Do, are, are people relying on our opinion going forward? Or do we think You're right. Nobody gives a shit. Okay, right, exactly. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we, you know, we make this a little bit of a short one because uh, we got big weekends ahead of ourselves. So, yeah, uh, you know, the only sports that's going on in my world is is, is uh, the the football, the F U T B A L one L in it, uh, uh, La Liga, the Spanish spelling, the Spanish spelling of it, uh, misspelling, but that's no, it, 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 it's, it's a Spanish spelling. F U T B O L. That's football. I stand corrected. My my Portuguese is lacking. Um, now, what about you? Watching anything on the on the streamings? What am I watching? Um, trying to keep up with only murders. I've only seen the first three episodes. I haven't seen the more recent episode. Uh, what else? No, I've just kind of been chipping away at the Plex. I uh, was recently inspired to down uh, borrow uh, rent uh, <laughs> a bunch of Steve Martin movies because Steve Martin and Martin Short are making the rounds for their promotion of Only Murders. Um, pre-strike, by the way, these are all pre-strike interviews that they did on their on the Conan podcast. And um, yeah, I, I last night watched Bowfinger for the first time. Uh, fun movie. What was the one uh, when you called while I was watching, and you were going to quote the movie? And you, were watching Bo, you were watching You were watching Bowfinger. Yeah, and it, so what? What line did you want to quote? Chubby Ray. <laughs> <laughs> I yelled at it, and I think I clipped out on the phone. I'm like, oh, he might not got to that part yet. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, Chubby Rain is the, the name of the movie, but the uh, the, the movie uh, within the movie. Yes, right. Um, yeah, that's great. It, that's a great it, movie. It was that's a fine. It was it was a very fine movie, written by uh, Steve Martin, directed by Frank Oz. Um, Whatever yeah. happened to those guys? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whatever happened to them? You know, Does anyone hear, remember? Why do we hear more from them? Um, yeah, no, just the whole premise of that is just it's just great, just yeah. absolutely great. I know? liked it, and, and and you got to see L.A. from the time that I lived out there, essentially. Like I was in L.A. from. 99 to 2000. Dude, that walking down the highway scene, that's pre-green screen. Well, no, I mean, they cleared. Yeah. yeah the, and so the way it was filmed was Eddie Murphy's uh, second character ha- is forced, coerced to cross a major L.A. highway uh, for one end, like basically eight lanes. And, um, I mean, it was filmed basically. They, they, cr- they He actually crossed a highway, but it was closed off, and they added the cars in digitally afterwards. So... That's it. It was but, not a green screen thing. But but, uh, but yeah, it's a, when you used to have to do that, like the, what it took to close down an L.A. highway, even even for a couple hours, you know. Oh, on God. It's Star- Carmageddon. Uh, yeah, t- t- don't even start. Yeah, but no, that that's uh, by the way, uh, you know, I, I, I will read it. I will read it because I checked my phone and this this came through our, our good friend Taylor uh, sent it to the hockey group. Uh Okay, from Stormy Dales. K, I'm 110 and a virgin. <laughs> I'm not a scale or a doctor, but I have spent some time beneath 215 pound man, and Tiny was not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's what I want to circle back to. I almost forgot that I would have been pissed. Like like every set, I forget a punchline or a joke I always want to get in. I want to circle all the way back to the start of the – Marine attack helicopter pilot who's now on the space station. Here's the most beautiful thing about what I know of this woman. She is friends with my wife's boss because they played on an MIT basketball team together. 
and there is an MIT basketball chat from their from the time they were on the team together. And these women have all gone on to accomplish and have great careers and do these great things. And it's just amazing. but they shit on each other the same way the F and H guys do on our and it was just so funny to hear the same thing because uh you know, my wife's boss took a screen grab and sent it to my wife when they found out. It's like, wait, she's piloting the spaceship to go to the, you know, to go to the space center, the space station. She couldn't make a layup. You know, it just, and it's just, you know, she's not this incredible person. It's their friend. And you're going to shit on your friend. You know, yeah, you know, you, they, 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 and it, it's great. I mean, they're all so supportive. Uh, management's wife bought uh, our boys the the official um, t-shirts for the mission so they have the official t-shirts and we watched like the launch you know uh, recorded it <laughs> you know didn't ah. did not get up at four but it but it is it's it's cool and they wore their shirts and it was really nice but it was really funny it was it, it's just such a nice sweet human moment to find out okay the 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 these division three you know women basketball players all these years later you know are, are just like you know all star making sure I remember what a what a loser I am or that are you, you know, are you saying that women are just like real people oh you know close there, no, okay. no, yeah, what is that like management used to get people magazine and they have that celebrities just like drinking coffee stars they're just like us like women they're just like people <laughs> but but it was it, it wasn't like oh my god she's incredible and she's accomplished this it's like really right, she's what? flying a spaceship she can't make a layup yeah right right no girl power on that chat it just no. It's great. I mean, we, we honestly just locker room talk. You know, that's all it is. We're, we're, I'm sick going out of this, so I don't get. You're not getting me to go down that rabbit hole with you. Nice try. Okay, so you're watching only murderers. I finally finished uh, Maisel. I ah. will say it was everything I'd hoped the series would be. the The last season, I don't want to say was disjointed. But it, it was pretty much a um, – they tried – I think what I read – I was not in any meetings over at Amazon Prime. I don't want, I don't want to give, a, give, give, give any idea that I was part of the consulting team. But what I read is they thought they were doing six seasons. And after season four, getting ready to do season five and six, they were told, okay, wrap it up. <laughs> you know, this is the last season. And so they squeezed two seasons into one. And it was a little disjointed at first, it seemed, because there was some flash forwards and some flashbacks and some presents and then some flashbacks and then flash forwards. Uh, it, it tied up nicely. Um, the story arcs ended. Not completely like you would expect, but I'm happy. I, I, I like I like the ending. I like, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's a love story, you know, yes. and, and the love of comedy, you know, and, you know, it's funny because I was just reading a while ago when, you know, with Ted Lasso, when they were, you know, the, the Trent Krim character was like, oh, I kind of how would you feel if we never see this part of it, but I'm coming at it from this was my relationship with my father and blah, blah, blah. And, and Jason Sudeik is told the actor who plays Chen Krimis goes, the whole show's about father sons. You know, it's like, like football has so little to do with this show. This show is all about fathers and their children's relationships. Some could call them daddy issues. You know, episode four. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so, so, uh, I, I did. I really like Miss Maisel. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess all we have now to tie a bow on this one is is your parenting tip. Let's hear your parent. And and you know what? I, I, I you've mentioned a couple good parenting things already. So why don't you why don't you why don't you tie one of those into a nice little parenting tip there, Joe? Uh, let's see. Well, I would say that if you're going to, um, you know. Uh, plan long distance drives. Make sure that you're uh, and you're taking long distance drives with your uh, driving age kids. Uh, make sure they know also how to drive, um, <laughs> because otherwise, if you you know want to relax, take a nap, 
uh, eat a sandwich, um, go to the bathroom, whatever, you know, somebody else has to take the wheel and it might as well be uh, the kids in the car that have licenses versus say a hobo that's on the side of the road that is somehow being coerced to take over your car because you become incapacitated. And um, I don't know where I'm going with this, but teach your kids how to drive when, they, when they're old enough to drive or when they're 11, like Jacques did. So <laughs> um, my parenting tip is going to segue right from yours. So just the other day, uh, maybe I did. Maybe I did it. Maybe this is just talk. As I was driving my son and his friend home from football practice uh, with an O, B O L, football O, football O practice. <laughs> um, as we were getting off the exit, you know, it was just kind of like a, a tight turn, and the, the, they didn't go flying from one side to the other. But chief forces forced physics took over in the back seat and so my little guy says when you turn right do the g forces push left or right and so i said you know what i'm not really sure so i went to the place where during the pandemic the height of the pandemic i would take my then my then 13 yeah. 12 he was 12 when it first broke out uh, yeah 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 Three 12 years ago. yeah 12 yeah 12 and 9 you know, we would take them driving, you know, to this place, big, huge open parking lot. And for the next 10 minutes, I was doing figure eights, <laughs> making the boys fly from one side of the car to the other and doing like, well, so I'm not sure. So if I turn left, you go which way? <laughs> and then they go fly. Okay. So now if I go right, okay, hold on. I didn't write that. And I did that for like five minutes. And then maybe I did, maybe I didn't say, do you guys want to drive? And I was smart. I was smart where I would make whoever wasn't driving get out of the car and go wait over there um, so that the other – so so if the cops did show up, I was only charged with one count of child endangerment, <laughs> not two. And we spent – you know, so I'm taking your advice even before you gave it. And not only am I teaching my 13-year-old how to drive, I'm teaching his best friend – um, you know, who's 12, how to drive, or I'm not, and I'm just making it up to be funny on the podcast. I, I will say, I will say that, oh, did I, did I mention that the postman recognized me? Did, did we cover that? Yes. All right, we covered Uh But also, uh, my parenting advice is make sure your, your son's kids think you're the coolest motherfucker out there so they can relentlessly remind your children your dad's the coolest guy in the world because there's nothing your children like hearing more from their friends that you have the cool dad who wants <laughs> us drive a car. I'm reminded of the Onion headline, cool dad, awful father. <laughs> and with that, Biff, why don't you take us out? Uh, I know you've been silent this whole podcast, but please, Biff, impart some some wisdom onto our audience and everybody thanks for listening to the carnival personnel podcast available on all streaming medias to uh listen to anyways Biff, take it away oh thank you thank you very much <laughs> it was uh it was an honor to be on the podcast i don't know um i don't like to talk this much out of turn um but i do want to say that i uh I enjoyed seeing you in the in the in the flesh, as they say, uh, in in the person. Uh, it was nice to play uh, the Mario Brothers uh, and to play the Tetris <laughs> and the uh, uh, and the, uh, the, the Galaga. Is that how you Galaga? You play the pinballs and. Um, Oh, it was, and we had, oh, the strudel. It was, it was magnificent. Oh, I, 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 I enjoyed it very, very much. So thank you very much for having me on your podcast. And don't forget... Apologies.